Have to bear with me. Um, I'm reading my father's obituary. <sighs> Bob Taylor, age 69, of Moody, passed away February 19th, 2021. He is survived by his wife, Dorna C. Taylor. Daughter, Lauren Grace Taylor. Son, Robert Thomas Taylor, second. Brother, Ron Taylor. And grandchildren, Clara Catherine Taylor and Olivia Cheyenne Taylor. Bob worked for over 33 years. Red Diamond Coffee and Tea for 20 years and served on the board of directors of the Alabama Food Manufacturers and Producers Association. Thank you.
when the flame shall be silent, the clouds be rolled back as the scroll. The trumpet shall be sound, and the Lord shall be singing. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. I'm going to take my glasses off so I can't see you. <laughs> Hopefully that will help me make it through. Um, dear friends and family, I ask that you bear with me as I try to do this <clears throat> in a manner which will, I hope, primarily bring honor and glory to God and secondly honor Bob's last wishes. I may stammer or stutter as I'm not the gifted public speaker my husband was. I hope not to say anything inappropriate as he is no longer here to poke me in my ribs <laughs> in an attempt to silence me. I know as if that would really work, right? <laughs> as all of you are aware, Bob had a deep abiding faith in God and an immeasurable love for his son, Jesus Christ. It radiated from the very core of his being. It guided and directed his every movement. Bob was the best man I ever encountered in my life. I would like to share some personal notes from Bob as well as Devotionals I forwarded to him, which drew a response. David Bennett, he wanted you to know that you were the truest friend, mentor for most of his life, and God will bless you for that. I'm sorry. He asked me to thank John Bearden for taking care of his mother and for taking care of us. He asked me to thank Ron Elliott and Lynn Tillman for being friends all of the time. He asked me to thank Ronnie and Charlene, his brother and sister-in-law, for praying for me slash us and for their spiritual guidance. He wanted me to thank Emily, Jessica, and Bryant for the joy that they gave him. He asked me to remember his Aunt Dorothy, who was such a sweet, loving, kind lady. And he said to thank Mr. Bauer for hiring him and believing in him when others did not. And he asked me to thank his cousin Bruce and his wife Terry for opening up their house to he and Tom when they traveled to Daytona to race it. The ungodly person fears man, not God. An oracle is within my heart concerning the sinfulness of the wicked. There is no fear of God before his eyes. Psalm 36, 1. The strong Christian fears God, not man. Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright. A man who fears God and shuns evil. Job 2, 3. The weak Christian fears man too much and God too little. Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Ecclesiastes 12, 13.
home sweet home. There is no place like home. These all died in faith. They confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Hebrews 11, 13. The day of life with them is ended. Its duties are ended. Its responsibilities are past. Its hours are fled away. What a trying day some of them had. How stormy, how sultry, how often overcast, how gloomy. But it is now past and past forever. The toils of the wilderness are over. They had much to afflict and pain them. A difficult and dangerous journey, a long, wearisome march, many a heavy cross to carry, many a stubborn foe to face, many a painful doubt, numerous gloomy fears. But now the wilderness is all behind them. The afflictions of the pilgrimage are terminated. Those sufferings were sharp and some of them continued long. Many of them were endured in secret without sympathy and without relief. There were soul sorrows, agony of mind, as well as sharp pains of body. But however multiplied, however severe, however protracted those sorrows, they are past and gone, never, never to return. The sweetest repose is now enjoyed. The poor tabernacle has been taken down and is laid in a quiet resting place until the resurrection morning. The soul is gone to be with Jesus. It has traveled through the rough path of life and is now in God's presence where there is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. As Christians, we are going to the same place. The graves will soon be ready for our bodies and the mansions of glory for our souls. We are going home, home to our Father's house, home where our hearts have long been. Home where all of our prayers will be answered and all of our best desires will be gratified. Home, sweet home. There is no place like home. Especially our home. A paradise without a tempting serpent. A paradise where all are holy, all are safe, all are happy. Those pure and perpetual joys which are at God's right hand await us. We taste them now and are delighted with the sip. But there we shall soon drink full draughts of eternal glory, eternal joy, and eternal blessedness. Amidst present toils and trials, dangers and distresses, when wearied, wayworn, and tempted to fret, remember that you will soon be home. Think, think, O oh my soul, of an eternity of enjoyment. When the sufferings of time are ended, now the dwelling of God is with me and he will live within. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Revelation 21, 3 through 4. I thank you for being with me. When I die, hallelujah, bye and bye, bye, I'll fly away.
I take way too much after my dad, so I kept trying to think of one thing to say, and that turned into about 50 other stories because I ramble a lot. Um, Just like your dad. Yeah, literally. <laughs> but um, he was my biggest supporter. If I wanted to do anything, he may try and talk me out of it, but he'd always come around because I know too much like him and I'm too stubborn to give up on anything. Um, I came home one day with a halter, a horse halter. And he said, why would we need that? And I said, because I'm buying a horse. And he said, you're not buying a horse. He gave me so many reasons I didn't need a horse. Three days later, I owned a horse. And um, he got on board with it. And he would leave work to come and watch me ride. And he was at every horse show I went to and paid for him. Um, <laughs> Um, he drove me six hours to a drive trip and bike competition and let me tell you why I'm not a golfer at all I don't even think I placed but he was so proud um, I think Thomas and I could have come home and said we wanted to join a circus and he would have been behind us with it he would have supported us the whole entire way um, he gave both of us our great work ethic he may knows my dad knows that he's been breaking child labor laws since the both of us can walk and talk. <laughs> um, and I can't thank him enough for that because a lot of people our age don't have a work ethic. And I work with a lot of people. He, um, I sold my first t shirt at eight at a food show called Law Grocery. And you would have thought I brought him a million dollars. He was so happy. And he still talked about it to this day. He was an absolutely wonderful man who touched many people. And he would always be there for anybody if they needed it. And he taught me so many things that I had no idea at the time I would need to know. Like how to change the oil on a tractor. Who, who needs to know that age 10? But he taught me, and now I know. And um, I'm so glad he did. My dad was 69 and I'm 20. And that doesn't happen very often. I used to joke about it because I just thought that was so cool. And it really was because I wouldn't ever trade having an older parent. He taught me more than I would ever learn from anybody else. And I would never want another dad. Um, we all thank you for being here today. And um, we want to open up the floor to anybody who'd like to share Bob's stories. I'm sure a lot of you have some. Oh, thank you. Uh, my name is Steve Lowry. I uh, work at work at Red Diamond. In fact, I just realized a few minutes ago that Bob Bob joined Bob joined Red Diamond in uh, January of two thousand one, and I joined Red Diamond two months later. So we've been there almost the same amount of time. And and uh, for a lot of that time, our our paths were a little different. I was out traveling the countryside trying to find bottlers to bottle our ready-to-drink tea. And Bob was mostly 
around Alabama, Tennessee, and Kentucky, and doing doing his thing. But uh, when we when we moved out to the to the new facility in, in Moody, uh, got to know Bob a lot better because our offices were close to each other, and you guys moved down from Kentucky to Alabama, so I got to know him a lot more. Uh, Bob was a storyteller. I mean, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, and most of you that know Bob, he loved to just stop by your office, at least he did mine, and, and just chat a while. When there was a lull in what he was had going on, he'd stop by and just, and just tell me stories. And I knew about the horse, by the way. I could have told you that story. He, he loved to talk about you and, and all you guys, and he was so proud of you and everything that you had going on. And, um, you're right. He didn't always understand everything that you were thinking, but he supported you guys and he loved you immensely. So I, uh, I appreciated that about Bob. He, uh, um, sometimes Bob's stories, you're right, could go, they weren't a straight line story. Sometimes Bob's stories could go, he would, he would think of something in the middle of a story and all of a sudden, we're taking a right and we're going somewhere else. And I remember usually he would stand in my doorway in my office when he would tell these stories and I would sit at my desk. And when one of those stories took that right and went somewhere else, I just dropped my pencil, pushed my chair back and said, this, this is going to be good. We're going somewhere now. And, and a few minutes later, he was, he was somewhere else and we'd get it back on topic and but he would tell me about his days when he used to play baseball. And by the way, Bob used to uh, race cars. He was, I think, race, uh, drag racing and stuff like that. And I would, uh, I would, you know, say, well, I know a little bit about NASCAR. I used to follow NASCAR back in the 80s. And I would mention Earnhardt and Bobby Allison. And that just fired him up. And then he would, he would go into stories about that. And uh, sometimes he'd get over my head because I don't know that much about racing, but he could get into uh, he could get into the weeds with it. But uh, one thing I want to tell you that he would do uh, sometimes when I would be planning one of my trips to go to out west, California, Texas, some Oregon, wherever I was going, uh, and for a long time I before we had some more expert people calling on. Uh, uh, Walmart corporate. I would go to Bentonville, Arkansas and do my best to try to uh, stir up some business there. Um, but Bob could tell when he would stop by my office and I was packing my bags and putting my presentations together and getting ready to go. He could tell if I had, he could tell by my face, my, uh, my, my, uh, just my way that day, if I was, if I was a little bit tense, if I was a little nervous, he could tell that this was a, a major call or, or just a visit to one of my dairies. And so he would pry into that. Where are you going this week? And I would tell him, well, Bob, I'm going to, going to California. I'm going to call on Safeway or I'm going to see a new dairy out West. And he would say, okay. And he could tell, um, he would, he would want to know details about it. And I would tell him details about it. And I can't tell you how many times I would be in my hotel room at seven o'clock in the morning, getting ready for the call that day, getting my game face on. I can't tell you how many times my phone would buzz and I'd look down <clears throat> and it's a text message from Bob Taylor. And it would just say, thinking about you today, good luck on that call. And that meant a ton. That is a man that not only is a man of faith, that's a man that walks with his faith. That's a guy who puts it into action. Uh, we weren't close buddies. We didn't hang out all the time, but Bob, I think Bob loved me and I love Bob and I appreciated that about him. And I know he was that way to uh, others could tell a similar story, but I just wanted to share that with you that um, uh, he made his mark at Red Diamond. And I'm sure he made his mark at Kroger and with a lot of people. But uh, just wanted you to know, he made his mark with me too. He's a, he's a great man. Uh, we're going to miss him at Red Diamond. And I'm certainly going to miss him.
My name's David Bennett. Uh, Bob and I go way back. Um, most people think that we worked at Kroger together for, let me take this off, sorry. Most people think Bob and I worked together for five or six years at Kroger. We started at the same store bagging groceries in 60, uh, 68, 69. Um, so back then, a lot of the clerks actually closed up the store at night. So we closed up the store. We'd go out and eat afterwards. Uh, for about three or four years there, we were thick as thieves. We both uh, uh, went to, uh, he was also my roommate in college. Uh, uh, so we had a good time there. Um, uh, told a funny story while I go to several people. Bob uh, had blonde hair, he grew, he grew it long. Uh, and every night before he went to bed, he taped it all the way around. Uh, so it would stay in place while he while he slept. As you know, Bob Bob was well, well kept. You know, he always dressed neat. So uh, uh, he had a he had a '67 Chevelle that he was spotless. Even the motor was he cleaned the motor at the same time he washed the car. So uh, he was just very meticulous. Uh, we were groomsmen at each other's wedding. Um, so he's been a long time friend. Uh, uh, when Bob tells you he's going to do something, he'll do it. If he can't tell, he can't do it. He'll tell you. Uh, uh, and at the same time, the other thing that you got to know about Bob, Bob sold tea. Okay. But if Bob could help you with another item or a planogram or whatever, he would do that too. So he would, I mean, he, he was your friend. He was not just your, your business partner. He was your friend and he'd do whatever it took. So, um, Bob and I usually communicate about once a month in the, in the last many years, uh, but we always kept in touch. He bounced stuff off me. I bounced stuff off him. But um, I guess the thing I remember the most, Bob was really good at recognizing folks for things that they did or, you know, it's something that was good. And he was always looking at the positive stuff for somebody. But he carried these post, post uh, cards around all the time. And every now and then he would, you know, if he sees something good, he would, Right on the postcard, and he would send it out or whatever. But with me, after we talked, uh, usually I got a postcard three or four days later. Said thank you for talking to me and uh, uh, helping me out with this or whatever. And he says, "I love you," and I'll never forget that. But uh, he's going to be missed. Uh, I, I just, uh, I, I'm just, I'm so, I'm grateful that uh, that I had the opportunity to know Bob for as long as I did. And I'll miss him. I know you will too. This is going to conclude our service here today. Uh, we will be traveling by procession to uh, Bethel Cemetery. If you'd like to follow us, please pull around and we'll be forming up on this side of the building. Thank you.